The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar, in and out of the cigar industry. It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, November 2nd, 2019, live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is episode 499 as we continue the countdown to episode 500 next week, where we will tie the record for the most episodes on a cigar podcast ever. Today, he is a competitor for over 20 years with a cigar shop, just four exits down the highway. He is the founding member and president of the Cigar Association of New Hampshire. He's the owner of the oldest cigar brand here in New Hampshire called 724, and all that, and I actually call him my friend, Kurt Kendall from 724 Cigars joins us. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its 10th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast, awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine, awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest, the Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network, and you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Kurt Kendall, welcome aboard. Thank you, David. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Oh, it's an honor for us. Yeah, yeah and it's been a long time since uh, you were on the Cigar Authority. Do you remember being on this way back when? I do recall. I, I, were Rhode we in Island. Rhode Island? Rhode yeah. Island, yeah. We were in Rhode Island. We had done the one and only, I guess, Rhode Island Cigar Festival. That That's they did right. It. That was a long time ago. Um, I think one other time with uh, at the golf tournament. Ah, uh, sure. At, I, at I the, the Cigar Association New Hampshire Golf That's Tournament, right. yeah. Yeah, that was, I had two gets at that. Uh, I got uh, Kurt Kendall, and I also got Johan Swan from Davidoff to talk. Right. Which was unheard of. It still hasn't happened to this day. <laughs> right. Blow never, on. Never talks on the microphone. And uh, not only are you here doing the podcast, though, you're here in our store, actually working in the store. Has this ever been done before? Um, and selling cigars in my yes. store. So thank you oh. for ringing my register today. It's an honor, really, to be here with one of my mentors. And uh, I, I think if I, if I didn't know Dave and... Uh, for all the things that you've done over the years, yeah. I probably wouldn't be in business right uh, now. So thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Uh, don't blame me. Uh, one way or the other. <laughs> How much longer is this love fest going to go no. on? It, it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and 724, this is this is an old brand that is part of the New Hampshire culture. Um, and, you know, you can't help but seeing the signage over the years. And as it's fading away, you actually brought uh, the cigar back to life. Um, when you first came out with it, um, we actually took the brand on. And uh, MAME actually came in the store, I don't know if you remember this, and did a rolling demonstration oh. uh, in our store when the, when the brand was launched. So it's been a long time. That's so right. Maybe with it, Mark Moss. Yes. So it's uh, way overdue. But uh, uh, Barry's actually on the wheels of steel today because Ed Sullivan is uh, on vacation. Uh, he's on. We went to a podcast festival in Washington D.C. to learn more about this podcasting thing we've been doing. I think he's a closet Washington Nationals fan, and he went for the parade. There we go, because there is a parade going. But Barry, tell us um, 724. What, what about the cigar? Well, today's first cigar is the 724, and it's manufactured in Honduras for 724 cigars. The size is a 75 by 38 Lancero, and it features a Brazilian Matafina wrapper over a Costa Rican binder with fillers from Colombia, Honduras, Mexico, and Nicaragua. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single cigar will set you back $9.49, while a box of 20 is $166.99, which is a savings of almost $23, or 12% off the box price, on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. All right, so a Lancero, huh? You threw a curveball at me here with a Lancero. Uh, cedar wrapped around the, the base of it, and um, what, are, what are you trying to do here? Try to make cedar flavor? Well, I'm a, I've always been a fan of the cedar enhancement of tobacco and cigars. This And I always uh, appreciated the appearance of this, probably... Brought to the market, possibly by the Fuente family. Right, sure. So I did rob that uh, 
from them. And, it, it does uh, make a, a change in taste because I've I've actually tested a, a one with cedar wrapped around it. Say they were off child as opposed to their chateau, and dramatic difference. That does make a difference, so especially it, as it ages and yeah. sits. All right, so let's give it a cut and light. Did he say everything right about the cigar? Yeah, I yeah? think pretty much. All right. Barry covered it pretty nicely. <laughs> so, Thank so you. Jump in any time when, when we get it wrong. But it's time to cut our cigar right now. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. So Good you, draw. Which is the, the big fear factor here when it comes to Lanceros. And the other thing about Lanceros is often it's the most expensive one in the bunch, and this is very reasonably priced as far as the rest of the line goes. That's the goal. We don't uh, sell cigars by weight. We <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's one of my favorite sizes. I know it's not a retail favorite, and uh, I understand it. Maybe you guys might not like them as much as i do but so you smoke lanceros other people's brands too i do yes really i do no Pro I'm, I'm just scorned from it from the uh mistakes i've made over the years buying heavy into a lancero size of somebody's brand and the next thing you know they're sitting on the shelf and has another year and it's oh hey happy anniversary to all these cigars i have sitting around <laughs> right not selling um, so that somebody said that to me is it did I hate Lancero cigars and I say I no, I just hate that they don't sell because I'm in retail and I buy these things and they sit around and have anniversaries with them well I think the uh, if, if the staff likes them and they train the consumers to like them they do really well okay. we've done really well with them there are Lancero shops out there I hear that yes and uh, they which do really well with them so I like them. I hope you guys enjoy them. All right. Let's light her up and see if we like them. Um, All right, what Barry, do we have we're going to go to shot two, and we've got the Vertigo Blizzard. The Vertigo Blizzard features single action. You press the button down, the lid pops open, and three jets come alive, fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank with an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom for the low price of nine ninety nine. That's the Vertigo Blizzard. So you find that the Lancero gives a heavier taste of, of, of the line? Probably a little more concentrated uh, flavor of the wrapper. Definitely a little fuller bodied. This particular blend uh, is intended to be a medium bodied cigar that uh, just about anyone can smoke. So depending on what size you enjoy or like, uh, but the, the narrower ring gauges tend to be a little fuller bodied for sure. I feel fancy smoking a Lancero. You look fancy. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't hate it yeah. as far as the feel of it. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah Johnny prefer, prefers something thicker in his mouth. Yeah. You, for usually. But he's used to a little thinner in his hand. Yes, he is. Yes. Wow, you're just jumping right on the bandwagon. There we go. So he, he can hang. He can hang. All right. So 724, historic brand here in New Hampshire. Why is that? Well, the brand started in 1874 and. Uh, our own Manchester, New Hampshire. It started at 724 Elm Street, which is equivalent to a main street in town. Yeah. It was a small, small retail storefront that made cigars. And uh, I understand they made about 21,000 cigars their first year. Mm. Uh, fast forward about 25 years, they built the factory that we know on uh, Canal Street, or at least some of us know, that still stands today. And, uh, it actually became the largest manufacturer of 10 cent cigars in the world. Wow. Claiming they made as many as 80 million cigars a year. Wow. So you understand what 80 million cigars is. There's about 350 million cigars sold in the U.S. a year. They were making 80 million then. Big brand. Big brand. What happened to them? Why, why did it end up going well, away? Well, the best I can tell the, with the uh, Cuban trade embargo and the lack of Cuban tobacco, which was all the filler, and the popularity of cigarettes, uh, a lot of the cigar uh, factories and uh, manufacturers closed down. What, what, now, you're, you're, you're a collector of memorabilia and cigar memorabilia and things, so you, you know, know more than others of what happened here in New Hampshire. Were there other cigar manufacturers here in New Hampshire? There were a few others. There was uh, one 
I'm familiar with called Spider. That was in Summersworth, New Hampshire. There was a lot of small, uh, smaller factories and a lot of private labeling. But there was uh, quite a few factories around New Hampshire. But 724 was definitely the one. And, and with lots of it, and you uh, you gifted me a, a nice old ashtray, and this has to be... From the, from the I'm 30s? 1930s, so 90 years old, an ashtray. Um, and I, over the years, have seen many 724 things. So they were one of those companies that were big into Branding, giving... marketing. Yeah. yeah. You That's know. how it all started. I started collecting the old antiques and memorabilia. I started seeing the 724... And then putting the pieces together with a factory down the street, yeah. learning the history of the brand. Uh, Roger Sullivan, who started it, was actually the largest taxpayer in the United States. Wow. And uh, there's a lot of cool facts. I w- so it intrigued me to bring it back to the market. And it was it, it was a leftover cigar brand? In other words, the trademark went away, or did you have to buy it? Well, I was very fortunate. A gentleman actually owned the trademark. I don't know if I've ever told this, but... He, he collected it for collectability. Ah. So when we approached him, telling him that we wanted to bring the brand back to the market, he was uh, happy to do business with me. Wow. So I was very fortunate there. All right. He just had a, a love for it and said, I, I want to hang on to this thing because, yeah. but, but here's somebody that's going to bring it back alive. Let me do this. Yeah. So fortunately for all of us or him and I, uh, yeah. it worked out good. Good. But it all started with a collectability and uh the collection of all the marketing things they use from the ashtrays, porcelain signs, you, you the don't box see cutter, and any, opener. Anybody, I, they must have been so ahead of the game than any other company that's out there. I, I remember when I started in the business, it was Optimo doing it, Tiamo was doing it. Uh, so we're talking in the 80s. But if you go back into the 30s, it was 724 that. Yeah, it you was know, everywhere. Yeah. And I, I happen to there. find a piece of this here in my collection I wanted to give to you, Dave. Oh, my goodness, of United. United. Wow. Piece, uh, match safe. I couldn't find any United uh, or matches uh, to match it, but. Oh, no my kidding. God. What is All that? Havana cigar. Is it a matchbook holder? It's a match safe. So it opens up. How does it open? That's cool. And. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's no, awesome, isn't it? No, can't figure out how to I open it. I just opened this thing 10 times. Oh, really? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Keep your matches inside. Oh, my God. Isn't that nice? It's just for a regular flat book of matches that's there, which these are old matches. Nice. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So this stuff is out there. Um, and this the stuff that you get now from cigar shops when you go to cigar events and you know, all of a sudden you have something. This is stuff that the next generation or generations from now, because this stuff is 100 years old. Yeah. It's there, so. Might be collectible. We're actually remaking some of the signs and designs that they used yeah. for the retail stores across the country now. So what you did on, the as used to say across of it, Sullivan. Yeah. R.A. Sullivan? R.G. R.G. Sullivan. and now you, And now you have K.A. Kendall. And just other yeah. than that, it's almost. I was reluctant to do that. I was convinced that it needed to be done for the uh, branding myself and my name. And but we did put the K. A. Kendall in placement of uh, R. G. Sullivan, and we've uh, stuck with it. And would you think at all about taking some of their um, like ashtrays and things like that and redoing them exactly the way they were? <laughs> We did. We yeah. actually sent that ashtray to China. Okay. And had a mold made for a, an ashtray that was a larger version that would meet today's smoker's needs. Yes, because the, the ring gauges were smaller yeah, Corona, in those yeah. days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even Lanceros. the cutters. But there's a there's a slot on there for a book of matches. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. And then the three slots Boy, for they, the cigar. They were really good. I mean, these are smart things that uh, nobody does these things. So, yeah, bring them back yes, alive. We, we put the slot in it, but it's designed to hold the cutter now. So Okay. Oh, all right. That's something so we uh, we're that. coming up with soon. And I wonder if this would ever come back, these box opener type of things. Their problem is they don't nail them shut anymore, and you know, right. it's not the same thing that, that's there, but... Cool memorabilia, and you're a collector of all this stuff. All of it, Not yeah. just 724, but everybody's stuff. Everybody's stuff. And that's what I do with the majority of my free time is uh, seek antiques and uh, be known for people come to me all the time. The 
you know, a third of the packages that come into my building are antiques on occasion. Yeah. That we're opening up and uh and people sought you out because no you yes. collect and they try to sell it to you. So initially when the brand came out, it was on the front page of the Manchester Union Leader and my phone rang off the uh, charts. And that's when I got some of the best pieces I've ever gotten that you from know, people that had exist. them in their garage or yeah. basement and or, or their collection. So there was a lot of it around. Probably difficult to get a newspaper article written about uh, a cigar brand nowadays. Yes. And which brings me to my point: How is your equivalency going as far as the FDA goes? Because it's obviously an old brand that was was in commerce, so you should have no issue. No, that's not def- necessarily the case. It's uh, but we are in good shape now with uh, the blends moving forward. So, but that doesn't have anything to do with uh being able to use it because we're not using the same blends and even though the company's been in business with Cuban tobacco you can't use the same blends Cuban tobacco Connecticut broadleaf binder and a Sumatran wrapper really wow have you smoked an original yes I so Thor and his mom Lisa were at the my retail store we were having a beverage refreshment and I said, you know, this is a good time to smoke uh, something because I, I collect a lot of cigars and I age them. So I went to the cabinet and I look and I said, oh, what do you guys want to smoke? And then I looked on the bottom and I had a five pack from 1938. Wow. And I do have a few different sealed boxes. And uh, I said, you know, this is a good chance to smoke an original 724. So we lit them up and uh, I thought it was going to be a dud. I had no idea. Or it would just crumble, but it smoked really good. Yeah, it, it had some good. oils left in it. And yeah, it really did. Because who knows if it was humidified all those years? Right. I mean, there are now, but but they tastes- they they come back. Uh, actually, all of us a collector of old cigars and brings them back alive, and then tries to sell them off and stuff. And he showed me bad cigars, and then all of a sudden they, right. they're good again and smokable. And I've tried some of the things and. There's some flavor to them. They, they I, I have some boxes from the the Perotti factory where they used to manufacture and distribute in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And when they closed and relocated, they found some boxes, and Tony sent them to me. Ah, so th- but those are from the 70s. Uh, after they closed the factory in '63, a few different companies did machine make them. Yep. And I have them on the market. All right. So this line here is. Is this the 1874 line, or is this just the flagship line? Yeah, this is uh, our original blend, our original, original line. It's a okay. six-country blend. We use a Brazilian wrapper. Uh, the second line that we came out with, did uh, we commemorated the uh, 1874 date with that Nicaraguan-made cigar. Okay. So these are made in Honduras in the uh, Tobacco's de Oriente factory with uh, Placencia. Yeah, so you have two different countries that you're yes. using right now, and it, you have a third line of the Connecticut. Well, we have five lines five all lines. together. Okay. So uh, we made a blend called uh, the Hustler. Yes, which is a striped cigar. Uh, but but I'll tell you, and I some people look at it gimmicky, stupid, or whatever. It's delicious. It's it, it, amazing. It's yeah. surprising. It, it's the best one I've ever had. You know, you look at it. I I, I look at it and say, oh, geez, I don't know. It's a, people buy and say bob a pole or whatever it is but you know how much is gimmicky to the look of it but whatever's going on and it actually tastes very good it is a very good blend uh that was made as kind of a joke we were sitting at a table blending i wanted to nick perdomo would actually talk me into coming out with a connecticut cigar he told me that that would be the best for the market today and i went to the table with that intention the uh, i wonder who taught nick perdomo that one but okay that's good <laughs> he didn't want to come out with a kinetic and i begged him you to begged come him. out with it and his so there you go it's all number one come isn't forward. that interesting that because it is true it, it's new to you your connecticut is pretty new that is new so it probably hasn't overtaken your regular yet no but it will it absolutely will well, i hope so we yeah. uh we did come out with that wk series yeah in honor of my son, William Kendall. And, uh, it's been out about two years now, and it is doing very well. Yeah, it's going to. 
you know, and I, I imagine the, the people listening to the Cigar Authority, more cigar geeks really into it. They want fuller body. They stay away from shade or whatever. But the, as a retailer, you know, you're selling more shade yeah, stuff absolutely. than you do. Yeah, absolutely. That's all there is to it. Never stop. I'm yeah, actually going back to shade now. I enjoy it a lot. That, that's one that has, because I'm kind of off the Connecticut thing right now. And that one, I smoked it this morning only because you were here and I wanted to, I wanted to support the brand. What a flavor on yeah. it. Yeah. So they can make they make some shade stuff with some flavor. It doesn't have to be that old school stuff, no taste, Connecticut right. shade, you know the brands. It doesn't have to be that. You put put some juice into it and it becomes a new generation of what a Connecticut shade is or how Barry says not your grandfather's Connecticut shade. This there's, there's some flavor to it. That um, hustler one, what do you have for um, So that actually has a I wanted to incorporate the Brazilian Matafina and the Connecticut so we tried several different variations, and as a joke, one of the guys just took a strip of the Connecticut, made a barber pole appearance cigar out of it, and just lit it up as a joke. Yeah, and then he's like, "Wow, this is uh, yeah. this is really good." <laughs> some some of them, it the, added the best a little cream, become, yeah, to the <laughs> to blend, the coffee, yeah, and uh, so we we evaluated that, and I said, "There's no way I'm coming out with a striped cigar because at the time." <laughs> The only thing really was was uh, inexpensive bundles and then the Between the Lines Fuente, which was so hard to come by. So we took a gamble. I put it out. We made it, brought it to the trade show. The doors open. I was sweating my butt yeah. off. People are going to make fun of me. Making yeah, fun of me. Yeah. And then it actually uh, it did very well. And a few uh, bigger brand uh, manufacturers came by and said, you know, I was thinking about doing that. And uh, so we got a little jump on it. They didn't have the nerve to do it. And somebody yeah. did it. You didn't get a lot of flack for it. So you start so seeing other people. I had a little bit of confidence at the end of the show, but it still always felt a little gimmicky. It is a really good blend of tobaccos, yeah, though. It is. And that really is what what is important as a blender or as somebody that's going to come out with a brand is to be able to stay true to yourself. You're not going to put something out that you're not going to smoke. Right. And you happen to smoke it and it was great. It yeah. is great. Yeah. Another one that you did is that you took a small format cigar, and, and the name is fantastic because many people have said it over the years coming into the store, I just need a little dog walk a cigar. So you actually called it that, and you packaged them in, in five packs like the old domestic cigars right. would be, be on the shelf, although they're premium cigars that are in there, but there's a like a wink to the old days at the yeah. same time. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was actually a mistake, so... The sixth size of uh, the original blend we were going to come out with was uh, the Londres. And the Londres was the, what I always saw from 724. It was either Londres or Club Perfecto. So we came out with the Londres. And because of my lack of uh, proper terminology, I asked this, the uh, factory to make me a shaggy foot. So I wanted the wrapper to come over the end of the cigar. So when you lit it, the wrapper was really got a boost. Yeah. So when the cigars came in, it was a shaggy foot, all right. It had no wrapper on the end, and it was three-quarters of an inch up. Filler. F filler and oh, binder. Oh, yeah. They put the filler, and they backed off the wrapper. The so when you lit it, it was yeah. the opposite effect. Yeah. You didn't taste the complete blend. You only tasted the filler. Filler and binder. binder. Mm. <laughs> so I, at the time, it was a big deal for me. I had 7,000 cigars, and I didn't know what to do with them. So we cut them all down, and then that was the birth of the dog wow. walker. Wow. Look how a, a mistake happened. Two you turned mistakes it into gold. so far we've gone over, and you've turned them into gold. Well, I don't know about gold, but. Oh, that's a winner. Are you kidding yeah. me? So when we released at the trade show, the dog walker name kind of ricocheted across the Absolutely. floor. Absolutely. And, uh. People have always said the, the terminology, but now you locked it in and you trademarked it. Trademarked it, yes. Trademarked it, and there it is. You own it. There it is. Perfect. So we have the WK. We have the original. We have the um, uh, Spider. No. Spider's what? no longer. Okay. We have the 1874, which is our Nicaraguan blend, and then we have what's called the Factory 57. Oh, factory sixty-five. Okay. So that was our answer to a little richer, fuller-bodied blend we do make in Honduras. It features a uh, a Lapa Nicaraguan wrapper. Factory fifty-seven was on the bottom of all the boxes I've collected. It was the factory number for the tax designation. Oh, all right, okay. And, uh, so 
trying to stay. It certainly wasn't their 57th factory. There was one factory. One factory. Yeah. I don't know if it was actually the 57th in the state or in the country, uh, but it was always known as Factory 57. So all right. that's where the name of that blend came from. All right. Okay. Uh, how about anything in the future? Did you sneak some things through beforehand? We of did. Course you did. We, yeah. snuck the, we, yeah? snucked, we snuck a few things through, and uh, we do have a few future projects that we uh, have in limited production now and uh, that will be coming out in uh, full production in the future. You want to say anything or keep it secret? Yeah, I'd rather keep it uh, quiet but, but, right now. But somebody could go up to Twins and maybe see it. <laughs> That's a good possibility. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then report back to us, Barry, on a later show maybe. <laughs> I'm just saying because you're investigative type of thing or whatever. But no, we'll keep it a secret. Um, and maybe at the trade show, you'll release it this year coming? Yes. Yes. Yeah, trade show coming. We do have, uh, which I haven't told anyone, a dog walker coming out in the WK series, which is Good. in production right now. You're going to do that in pack two? It'll be in five packs as All well. Right. So 30-count box, we've learned uh, to get people to entice to try it because the packs, you don't, really don't know what's inside. I don't so. want to buy five, so let me try one yeah. first. And- Put the 30, five-pack behind it. Yeah. We'll Good. set your counter up. We'll have all, all of them right. out there. It, it, it's interesting because, you're first and foremost, you're a cigar retailer yourself. So as you build these things up, you, you're thinking of the retailer. If, if it works for you, you can test it, try yeah. it out, and, it, and it's all set. And then shame on the retailer if they can't figure this out because you've right. set them up for success. Sometimes you shake your head because you, it's a it's proven to me and right. it works, yeah. but not for others. So you got to teach people yeah. uh, our methods anyways. But I do have the fortunate blessing of being a retailer and seeing what everyone else is doing and seeing what works and what might not and, and uh, as 724 was themselves they yes. were a retailer which is which is a true boutique when you hear boutique a boutique has to stem from a retailer because that's a boutique and then it becomes their brand of what it is some people will call it a house brand or whatever it is but no then it goes national and it becomes a boutique brand so here's a true boutique brand with a lot of history to it uh 724 this is the lancero what are we having for flavor notes and taste here it's got a uh, little a little bit of sweet char component going on you had that lined up as soon as I started yeah, I, talking. You know I'm producing. I'm going to give you a hard time. It's what I do. <laughs> that's it. So get them off the air or that's it. Why don't we find out what Barry tastes? All right. I agree. You know, some cedar. <laughs> <laughs> you agree. I'm right. You're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, I taste the cedar. But there's definitely cedar. The cold draw before you lit it, there was also a, like a hint of vanilla like in the background. The cedar continues through the smoke. I'm already halfway through mine. It's just very smooth and balanced. The draw is effortless. Have you had draw problems? Because that's what I always worry about. Or they're on top of this thing and they know what to do. Well, it's not underfilled. It feels str- no, full. That's our goal. I want a firm cigar that uh, draws well. I Tough will one. be perfectly honest with you. I've never had a tight Lancero. And then I cut this and it, it had a little bit tighter draw than uh, normal. You Which is little, unusual, but I will admit telling, to it. Nobody knows how to have to know that, but okay. <laughs> no, no one had to know it's that. An but honest guy. Uh, they they do tend to smoke and draw really well. I had earlier this morning the Corona, fabulous, two sizes that do not sell very well in, in retail shops and stuff, but they do taste amazing. Uh, I wish it would only switch back to Coronas being the, the big seller. of. I think people miss miss that. What do you typically go to yourself when you're smoking a cigar? Other people's brands or whatever. Yeah, I do tend to prefer a, a 46 ring okay. and under. And yeah. uh, that's what I generally smoke. But as a retailer, you see it's 52 and above. It's 50 52 ring and up. Yeah. It's- I smoked a 660 yesterday because we got an order in from the factory and I wanted to make sure they were yeah. performing properly and it didn't feel horrible, but I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I do the narrower. But all of a sudden, the 60s, which looked cartoony to me seven years ago, all of a sudden be- became the 50 ring gauge of today. Yeah. It's not crazy, but we got 80s out there and things like that. So, uh, all right, let's go to break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little retail with Kurt Kendall. We'll talk about our reps that we share, our customers, and our suppliers, because we share on all this. 
Uh, who else can we talk about in this stuff with Kurt Kendall? Um, he's another local retailer, so he's perfect for this uh, next segment that's going to come up. We'll talk about 724 Cigars also. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Series is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper, considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez, full-flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper, rich in bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice, and available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum, competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, the Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lining up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, Those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making. 
Smoking Process. Padrón Cigars. They give you the cigar smoker. The confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padrón Cigars. Handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. As some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hey, what's up, people? This is David Ortiz, Big Poppy from the Big Poppy Cigar. You're listening to Cigar Authority. And we are back with fellow retailer, fellow brand owner, and all-around good guy, Kurt Kendall from 724 Cigars. Welcome back, everybody. We're smoking the 724 Lancero. Uh, not a Lancero guy, but I'm telling you, it's a lot of flavor. It's good. I like it. It's good. Lanceros are making a comeback, maybe, just, baby. Yeah, just like vinyl. Uh, what are we drinking, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, just, well, I hear vinyl is coming back. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> what we're drinking is... Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be, uh, we have a 724 Cigar Lounge. We purchase and pick up uh, unique barrels of spirits from around the world. So we have uh, whiskey from Tennessee, Kentucky, and I've been fortunate enough to be going to Mexico the last few years and buying barrels of tequila. So this is a- uh, by, by the whole barrel. By the whole go. barrel. Okay. Do you get so, to pick the individual barrel? Yeah, well, what they do is they present you with a variety of single barrels, so it's uh, not a blend. It's uh, one juice that's been aged in a barrel. This happens to be a Reposado, which uh, was aged just under one year. So a Reposado is aged from uh, 30 days to one year, and uh, that it's aged in an oak barrel, which gives it the color that you see. It's uh, we So we have this unique product in our 724 Lounge. This is the uh, Herodora Reposado. Now, Barry, I know you're going to ask this, but I'm going to jump the gun on this. Do they let you smell the bunghole when they pull it out? Is that a... What is that? Yes. Okay. It's, what Jonathan, yes. it's what Jonathan does after his dance with men is over. Yeah. Yeah. That's the... Bunghole? Bunghole. That's the plug they put in the side of the barrel. Cork? Yeah. It's a cork, yeah. Yeah. yeah I would yeah. call it a cork, but... It's called a bunghole. Okay. So a lot of people uh, think about tequila, and they think, oh, no, I don't want any tequila. They've had bad experiences. This is designed to sip. This is actually a uh, tequila flute, which is uh, specifically designed for tasting and sipping tequila. The best way to start with this is to put the smallest amount in your mouth. You're basically going to warm up your mouth, and you're going to bring it around your uh, gums, your tongue. So it's a little bit different from what Jonathan does. He likes to put the whole thing in his mouth. <laughs> 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 I think he means shoot it, but uh, I'm going to follow Kurt's example on this. So uh, you warm up your mouth with the flavors uh, of the tequila, and then your second sip, you can take a nice full sip. Uh, but this is not designed to shoot. It's designed to relax and enjoy, complement your cigar. What kind of alcohol content of this is this? This is uh, 80 proof. Okay. It, uh, the highest, I believe the highest uh, tequila can come out of Mexico is 107 uh, right. And why double barrel? So Come this down. was aged in a uh, a whiskey barrel for 11 months. Yeah. So it's a single barrel product aged in a whiskey barrel for 11 months. <laughs> and then one month in a... At, when you say a whiskey barrel, whiskey used to be in it? Yes. Okay. So it comes from a well-known whiskey producer. It's aged 11 months. And then it's taken out of that barrel and aged in a brand new uh, oak barrel for one month. 
So it's a double barrel aging process of a single barrel spirit. Do you know how many bottles they get out of a barrel? 200? Typically, depending on the angel share, which isn't much in the tequila world, it's between around 240 bottles. Wow. Dave, this doesn't suck. You could drink this. <laughs> it, it is less bitey than I thought it was going to be. But so, then again, you're talking good tequila as opposed to tequila, which I've had before, and uh, like something you don't want to ever get drunk on. And it's, that's when people say, I'll never drink tequila again. Right. It's like the hangover, the, everything that happens. This will, you will not have a hangover. If you drink this all night, it's a super clean spirit. You uh, incorporate this uh, with hydrating with water, and you'll feel like a million dollars in the morning. Barry, no do that and report yeah. back. No comments. <laughs> no, you've had you've had. Finish a, that. I've had my bad experiences with tequila. Well, we're talking good tequila as opposed to cheap tequila. I'll take this bottle home and I'll let you know next week. Huh? It's an open bottle thing. You can't actually take it home with you. Sorry about that. So uh, I love that um, in New Hampshire, it's it's different than when I started in the cigar business in Massachusetts, where retailers wouldn't talk to each other. They hated each other. We were competitive with each other. I come to New Hampshire, and it's quite the opposite. That we, we get together usually on a monthly basis. We know each other. Everybody respects each other um, because we're all fighting the same thing. We're not right. each other, but we're fighting the government. We're fighting everything that's against tobacco and stuff. Uh, and even it, getting on top of trends, being able to say, you know, what's hot right now? Yeah. What, what's selling in your store? It's, I, I usually stick around and, and hang out with you guys for 10 minutes before your meeting starts so yeah. I can say hi to the guys and ask the same questions. Yeah, that, that's all you know because you came into the cigar business in New Hampshire and there, right. but you do go across the country and stuff. And, it, you know, I don't know if it happens to you, but somebody goes into a store, you bring your brand on, and I'll take the brand on, make sure you don't sell it to so and so. I see a lot of that. I don't like to play that game. Oh, my God. It is nice to have something uh, unique or first of on occasion, but not exclusive to a certain area. I think it actually hurts the brand, and it hurts. You know, I have no problem with somebody selling the brand across the street from me or anywhere. I was on the receiving end of it, being in Boston with the big Boston players when I got into the business. uh, Everybody was like, don't sell to him, and we had a hard time doing it. So I come to New Hampshire, and I would never actually go into that same mode because I was on the receiving end of it. But I think it's even would hurt me if – so somebody didn't else have the brand because it makes the brand more sure. popular. And here you are, you come out with 724, hey, it's available. And I said, yeah, I'll take it. You said, do you want it? And I said, yeah, I'll, t- I'll take it on. And then I can't tell you how many people have ever said to me, though, why do you carry 724? And I said, well, why not? And they said, well, he has it. And I said, well, do you want to buy some here or do you want to drive up there? Because it's here for you. I, I look at it as a very positive, not a negative. But some people well, I appreciate it. that. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a brand, and why would I not want to carry somebody's brand of somebody that I know instead of a total stranger? Right. Of what it is, it happens to be a good cigar and all that stuff. If it if it wasn't, it would come in. You know the process of what it goes through. It didn't make it, and that's all there is to it. It must happen to March you all madness. the time, right? Get rid of it, and that's it. And it but it stays. It stays. You know how long now has it been on the market? Uh, we we launched it in uh, two thousand six in uh, real small, and uh, grew it over the years. We've opened a lot of accounts across the country. Yeah, and uh, we've been very fortunate with it. And it, it is from coast to coast, but uh, we don't focus on the. We focus on smaller regions because uh, that's what our sales force allows us to do. Yeah, yeah. It, it's but tough thank, for the Thankfully, small you didn't stick with the uh, exclusivity of certain brands because I probably wouldn't be in business right now <laughs> because the, the reps always stopped here first. Yeah, but, they hit me. but it was it was never the case. It, it doesn't do any good. If if maybe they try their first one ever from you, and then the next time they come in and, and, it, and it's here. Um, and what I do see is I, I think – you know, the rep would come in and say, you know, you never took such and such, but Kurt's doing really good with it up here. Why don't you give it a shot or something? Really? Oh, get, you know, it, 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 so somebody's testing it here. Sure. You know, um, because there is things that work on other sides of the country that don't, that don't work up here. I don't know why that ends up happening. Is there 724? Is is a certain area for 724? Maybe Texas or the yeah, West Texas Coast? Yeah, Texas does really well with it. And yeah. It's, uh, 
good people there, good quality retailers, mm. and uh, I have good representation there, so it does really well there. And uh, but it, it does well in a lot of different parts of the country. But even me, with having uh, multiple retail stores, fifteen miles down the road tends to be uh, a different market than you know. You're right. A different store, but so. I, th- I think the locals are missing it. You know, uh, we we heard a little bumper with Big Poppy that uh, uh, played uh, before we came back on. And why would you not bring Big Poppy in when he's the guy that's well known in this area as a baseball player, and most likely somebody's going to care? Why would you not carry Seven Twenty Four if you're in the area? Because it's a place that was up here, and it's a well known product that's up here. It's like. Wow. So you're going to take some oddball brand or something that everybody has and not have the special thing? It's it's a, it's a defeative purpose for a retailer not to look at something like right. 724. It's good for the industry as a whole. Yeah. So yeah. S- stick together. Well, and I think that's that's a big key too, being that you're a retailer, that we know as retailers that the brand itself is going to be safe. Yeah. yeah. It's important. We definitely want to protect you, the brand. Yeah. you could and, and you could have kept it for yourself. It's a well-known product you could have kept for yourself, and you were actually good enough to say, no, everybody can have it. You did all the work. Now everybody can have it. So well, th- there's so much to it, but I, I just know from some retailers on, on my side, they, they end up seeing it, and, oh, uh, you know, it's so-and-so's brand. I'm not going to do it. I, I think quite the opposite. It should be completely opposite. Oh, I know the guy that ends up having this. Let, right. me, let me definitely take it. It, to the positive of it. And I have heard that across the country on occasion. Like, why would I want to buy your brand? You're another retailer. Well, that's the case with a lot of different yeah. brands. And yeah. as you mentioned earlier, boutique comes from 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 the store boutique. itself. Yeah. That's the real deal. Um, CANH, Cigar Association of New Hampshire. Um, I go around the country also with fighting legislation and things like that. I will tell you, um, we put this together, and it is the model of the entire United States, of a state putting an organization together. So congratulations to well, us, us. Um, of what we did. And everybody has to look at this. There's three states in the United States that don't have a tobacco tax. It's Pennsylvania, where every mail order operation operates out of it. These are the big guys that have massive hundreds of millions of dollars operations. Florida, where every manufacturer is operating out of. And the little state, the quiet state of New Hampshire. And why is that? It's because of this organization. That's right. We fight hard for yeah. it. We pay attention. So other retailers, wherever you're listening to on the show, you need to put aside the I'm in competition with this guy and get together and put it together for the for the salvation of it. And to be honest with you, how many people do you get to talk to about your business? And we get to talk to each other oh, yeah. about our businesses. The and, last hour of all of our meetings yeah. is always communicating together and Making it better for all of us. It's fantastic. So even when it comes to employees, some of my employees, and I I pride myself to I have employees that have been with me for 24 years and down. I get a lot in the the 20s, a lot in the 20s. They stay with me and stuff. But every once in a while, the grass is always greener and people have left. Um, I have lost a few employees to you that's right yeah it hasn't happened the other way around but i've lost i don't know if you're overpaying these guys or just between me and you uh but but i've lost a few to you um I, I wonder what it is is it um i'm really hardcore and rough on them or um you're, you're, you're more laid back you're uh, brutal yeah oh yeah <laughs> What do you, well, what do you we think? we do uh, we have been approached <laughs> by a few to... people in the past, and uh, honestly, if somebody walks through my door from your door, I'm not a fan of. Uh, I don't. I never want to steal anyone. No, no, it's, they've it, got to be uh, and, and I, already out. Or, but I'll tell you, I wish the best for all my employees, and some of them have now worked for cigar companies, and they're right. and they're our reps, right? And you know, they came from me. Um, and some of them moved on to other stores, and some of them got out of the cigar industry and went to different things. But I wish the best for them is their life ahead. Always. Anyway, wherever that is, and if, yeah. it, if it goes to you, congratulations. And we do have a few that have left us and gone to other right. establishments. Right. So. so that's part of the thing. So when they do leave from two guys and they go to you, do you feel like they're um, – good salesmen, that they've been trained well, and they know what they're doing, or is it, uh, I got to deprogram these guys? 
<laughs> be honest. Yeah, you can be, yeah, you can be, yeah, be honest. honest. <laughs> no, no deprogramming at all. No. They are actually very good and uh, very well. They've all come with a a tobacconist certificate from yeah. TU, and uh, they're good people. So, so to call out just a couple of them, we have Steve that's over there. Steve is Steve's over there. He's doing good. Yeah, Steve's doing really well. He's managing one of my stores. All right. And we got Dan, Dan went over there. Yeah, Pastor Dan. Uh, he's he's actually uh, brought over uh, his pipe ideas. Yes. And, uh, he, he tried up. to bring them over to me, but yes. I passed. But it's well, working. we we took it on. Okay. And, uh, it's actually doing really well, Good. by the way. Good. I would highly recommend uh, <laughs> that's spending all right. forty or fifty grand on <laughs> yeah, a pipe selection. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> But uh, we know where to Got send that the cricket sound again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we know where to send the, our our pipe customers over to you. Even when I was in Boston, we had L. J. Peretti, which was the big pipe guy, still yeah. is to this day. And somebody would come in and would have a couple of little things that were there, and the guys really geeking over pipes and say, "I want this, this, this. Can you order me that and stuff?" I said, "Here's how to go. Here's directions. Let me send you over send to them over. yeah." Um, and and that goes for our Seabrook store that we have a guy that's over over in that way. And you know, why don't you go see him? He knows it better. Um, they embrace it. I'm I'm a cigar guy. That's it. You yeah. know, I, I don't know my alcohol. I don't know my pipes. It's cigars only for us um, until you see the day we we're hurt and you see you know okay let, let's do something there. Yeah, today's day and age, there's not a lot of people actually uh, selling the pipes in uh, mm. north of Boston. I can't think of a whole lot. So uh, we we decided to give it a try. It's actually been doing pretty well. All right, good, good, good. And I know Dan likes it too. I mean, he'd be in here and he'd have his cigar for a little while, then they go to a pipe, and it's like uh, sometimes both. Yeah, puts yeah. Cigar yeah. In well, his put some pipe. cigar in the pipe. You see he is that? A professional smoker. Did you see him put the pipe cigar in the pipe? Yes. Yeah. There's a term for that. I think it's a uh, pipe worthy or yes, yes, yes. That's it. Uh, <laughs> good, good guy though. Good guy. I, I hope he's he doing is. good. I'm happy yeah, to he hear is. that. Um, so we also share, um, some of the manufacturers that the reps, the same reps that go to see you, go we to do. see us, um, anything on, uh, have you thrown any out? Is there anybody barred from there? I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I'll start off that I have never barred anybody. I've thought about it many times and stuff. And we, we know the crazy things that have happened over right. the years for other people and stuff. I, I've had a talk with them and say, you know, you got to clean up your act here. Yeah. And, you know, what are you out of your mind? Take a shower some of once them in a while. Right. They, they uh, but, shoot themselves in their own foot. I, they, some <laughs> yeah. have. Some have. Well, we have barred. We did bar one. I'm yeah. not sure I want to mention it. That's okay. No, you that's don't have to right. say uh, name. And we barred him for about ten years. And, wow! Uh, oh, and it uh, it affected the business with the company because I ordered little to none. Okay, and uh, we did still do a little bit of business. Oh, he is now welcome back. All right, and uh, so you're a forgiving guy. He's with a different company, and uh, who we do a lot of business with. We have also barred customers. Ah, fired I've a few customers. I have done it, and that's exact terminology, which is a which is a good thing. You've received a lot of my past customers yes, in the past. Yeah, we have. you have. Well, and a phone call typically goes out, especially if you have a thief. Here's the yes. thief. Right. Here's the picture. Absolutely, and they're not welcome here, and they end up not being welcome anywhere. Anywhere, and and that's another great thing that um you know they steal from you, they've stole from me if they if they did it, and vice versa, and. You know, it's just not acceptable. No, and that's unacceptable. It. Um, and some of these lounge lizards or whatever word for it is that, you know, some guy comes in and brings his own cigars and it does all the wrong things and stuff. And we ask him, you should go somewhere else. And then it's like, okay, just a warning, blah, 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 blah. He's on his way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they're going to go to the next place and stuff. And, and I don't want them taking advantage of you and vice versa when it, when it comes to the other way. Um, so... Those people belong to buy online. That's what they should buy, but they shouldn't take up the space and and burden us. Right, right. Um, what do you think of someday of a draft? Like you know, the draft off players and things like that. That we could once a year draft a player from our team. We get rid of one of our employees for the or trade to trade. the other one or something. Wouldn't that be something once a year that it well, happens? I'd and, probably and, be compensating you as well because they're <laughs> trained so well. And uh, but uh, I'm not against that. Wow! And they, they would be shitting it as the draft happens tonight. Yeah. Everybody's thinking uh, they're nervous. Really, something. am I getting drafted? Yeah. 
And what's the uh, salary cap? Right, right. <laughs> which, which is, you know, we've never brought that stuff up. But uh, which one gets stuck with Barry? That's what I want to know. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> <That's what they laughs> I'm expecting to be a top three pick. Um, what else? Um, part of retailing is uh, monogamy is not part of cigar culture. You know, you, you want your customers to be loyal to you and always buy from you and go nowhere else and all that stuff. But the fact of the matter is this is so social that somebody goes somewhere else and somebody goes to the other place and whatever. You see that, right? You we see, do, yeah. We you know, see a lot of I think cross. we share a lot of customers. We do. Even in the uh, studio audience here. I- Absolutely. See a few. Uh, yeah, and I don't hate you guys for it. I, I don't like it, but no, I don't. Hate it. <laughs> but we do get a lot, you know, from events, and uh, you have your big event. Yes, we have one as well, and uh, we always see each other's customers. I think that's great. Yes, you know, it really is. It is, and other retailers have to understand that that it's part of the culture of what cigars is, and accept it, and then just be a better retailer for it. Um, if, if they're leaving you all the time, there must be a reason for it. Try to find what that is and fix it. Um, I, I think uh, rising tides raise all ships. And because you run a great operation, I have to step my game up. And I would hope that the same thing happens there. Exactly. You, you look at retailers here in New Hampshire. I think it's some of the best retailers yeah. in the country. And it's because everybody's going to step up their game if they want to compete That's right. with us, right? Yeah. That's how it is. You have to be unique. Keep your game up. And uh you know, give good service, be a quality retailer. I use yeah. that term all the time because yeah. it is. And, and you, I, I don't go around to other people's stores at all, but you do. You travel yes. the country and see other people's stores. So I, I hear it from all of her telling me stories. And yeah, other there's a lot of stories, people, yeah. a lot of empty boxes, a lot yeah. of uh, underfunded establishments. Yeah. And uh, I never really realized exactly what you had or we have as a state of New Hampshire. I remember Karen from Massachusetts, and, yes. she, and she was out there repping one, one time, and she came in the store and said, Dave, can I talk to you? And I said, yeah. And she says, you've got to go out there and see what's there. You're never going to believe it. Right. And I have never still done it, but I just heard horrible stories and stuff. She says, you'll, you know, you can hear all you want to hear until you actually see of the operations being mismanaged and misrun the way it is. And yeah, now she has a beautiful store right. in Agawam. Yeah. Really nice, nice bar. She did, they just built a new place. Yeah. yeah. So, it is true. So it's out there. It's out there. So in your shop, other than 724, which we know is hot, and it's hot for everybody, <laughs> what, are, what other brands are hot? What are you smoking? Well, I've been... Uh, I do like a lot of the same things that are hot here, and uh, I do like the Aladino cigars. Yeah, great, huh? I like the uh, I like Christian's uh, first twenty or oh, twenty. Oh yeah, yeah, that's really good. Uh, One of the few times I gravitate toward the Maduro over the the natural or the Colorado. I like that Maduro a lot. Yeah, it is very good, and it has a very unique cedar. Yeah, it does flavor and enhancement. I like There's a lot. There's another cigar rep that's out there that's doing a great job. He's been well trained, yeah. and he's one of the top cigar reps that are out there. He and is. That's because you brought hey, him up. For well, sure. he came from the retail. He's been yeah. in it as long as I have, I believe, selling out of a liquor store. Yes. And- and uh, yeah, I know he, I love he's doing really him. well yeah. right now, and uh, I know they're happy. I He was one that I, you know, he was leaving on his own, but I was happy to yeah, see absolutely. him go and uh, do well in a new career. Yeah. Wish and, them well because we did well, and they should do well. Jimmy Price. Yeah. We want them to stay, but if they can do better, yeah. do better out there and stuff and remember them uh, and we just bring up the next guy, right? Right. So, beautiful. Uh, okay, thoughts here on the 724 as we wrap up the hour. What do you think, Barry? Start with you. I finished mine. Uh, you did it all? Yep, cedar all the way through. Mm. Uh, a little bit of a nutty undertone or overtone, depending the cedar on the commercial. Is especially prevalent on the, the smoke coming off the foot. As you're, as you're smoking, sometimes I'll take a whiff of that the, aroma coming yeah, off the, the foot. the resting aroma is And that cedary. is very cedary. Long finish. Stays with me after I've blown out. It's got a minute or two that it's going to stay with me as opposed to completely dissipate in flavor. It stays with you. It's yeah, good. It's not, it, uh, it actually pairs well with this tequila. You're it, just saying that so you can get more tequila. The, key, the tequila doesn't overpower the cigar. The cigar's not overpowering the tequila. They just balance each other out. Really, really good pairing. Do you, do you pair 
in we your do. store? So we do. We have pairings all the time in our lounge. We pair whiskeys with cigars, scotches, even uh, wines, tequila recently uh, a lot because I enjoy it a lot. So is this the perfect pairing? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, neither one of them are overtakes the overtakes other one. The other and, one. And that's the key, right? Yeah. You, you don't want to have a very strong cigar and a white wine, or you right. don't no, want to have definitely not uh, some strong, or a light scotch yeah. with a real strong cigar. Right, right. Okay, that's it. All right, I, I can't thank you enough for coming. It's awesome oh, that you're you. here. I uh, look forward to you going down the stairs and um, bringing the register up for another. <laughs> I will. It, it's like. <laughs> I get the guy that owns the other store to come and sell cigars in my store for free. This is the best employee I have for the day. Um, but uh, good luck with 724. Well, thank you very Continue. much, Dave. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, what do we want to do for next week? Episode 500 next week. We saw it coming, but now here we are. We need to do something special, and frankly, we don't have a lot. So uh, we'll talk a little about that. And more when we return. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced, and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online Line at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th Anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. 
The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at better cigar shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop-to-shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is Armand Hassan, and you are listening to the Cigar Authority. And we're back with our number two. This is episode 499. Get ready for the big 500 next week. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. I'm going to put this Lancero down. Put gonna, that we're, Lancero down. We're going to stop talking about our closest competitor, which is, uh, <laughs> and we're going to get to business. Um, I, I have to say, I got to hand it to Kurt. He said to me that he was a little nervous coming up on the show. He did. I great. thought, hell of an interview. Yeah, yeah. He's a good storyteller, and yeah. he's got the facts about his brand. There we go. So, there it is. Um, so we're going to light up the next cigar, and this is a big boy. We went from a Lancero to a much thicker, bigger, uh, what I am guessing is going to be a much stronger cigar. This is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. Mm-hmm. This is just a prime one. If you want to be part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, go to the Cigar Authority on the right-hand side. You'll see it. It's $24.99. If you choose Prime, it's $29.99 a month. You quit anytime you want. But um, for the extra $5, you're getting this cigar. So what do we have, Barry? Well, today's second cigar is the Flor Dominicana 1994, and it's manufactured in the Dominican Republic for La Flor Dominicana. The size we're about to light up is the 6x58 Aldaba, and it features a San Andreas wrapper from Mexico with Dominican binder and fillers. As Dave mentioned, it is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime, and a single cigar will set you back nine forty nine. Why a box of 20 is $167.99, which is a savings of almost $22 or 11% off the box price on TwoGuysCigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, GuysCigars.com. So you get a $10 cigar for $5. How do we do it? Everybody's wondering. Volume. Volume. You have the same eight jokes. I do. I like it. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. And speaking of Perdomo Cigars, I think it is uh, Cigar... 
Um, Tobacconist, Tobacconist, Tobacconist Magazine. magazine. Tobacconist Magazine. Uh, Kurt Kendall's store, um, Twins, was chosen as... It's one of the, one of the finalists for... Uh, best, best cigar, cigar shop. Cigar shop in the best US. cigar shop. I forgot to bring that up, so mm -hmm. let me bring that up to the. Uh, we're talking about Perdomo, uh, best cigar. It's, best it's Nicaraguan brand. Yep. Uh, and his wife, as was it person of the year or something like that. I did not see that one. Yeah, so Janine, was Janine definitely, Perdomo. She's she, definitely there. And David's yes. up for uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneur of the year. Which so, I had I had no idea until I saw that yesterday that it had anything to do with it. But just Google Tobacconist Magazine, and you'll see the uh, thing there, and just make sure you vote for David. That's listen, all that matters. I don't think I really have a chance. You've got a chance. You've got a chance. Because I'm up against big names in the cigar industry. When you look at it, you say one of these things is not like the other. Right? Remember that? I'm with you. I don't belong it, in that group. That's not true. You, you're actually the only one that belongs in that group as a, as the well, entrepreneur. Well, I'm, di I'm different than the rest of the people Correct. in that group. That you know, all of a sudden there's a retailer in there. But whatever, uh, honor to be mentioned. I don't think I got a shop. If I do, great. Um, but to be that was them that mentioned them. I don't even know them, and for them to mention it, it's like wow. And I'm sure Kurt feels Aren't the same they, way. Isn't that the magazine for TPE? <sighs> no. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I'm, no, it's not. The Tobacconist magazine uh, has been out for a long time, and my, unless I'm confusing it with a different publication. I thought I saw. It, I thought I saw that, that it said that in the uh, on the website when I was voting for David. All right, might have been an ad. Do you vote for him? Yeah, thank you. Voted for yeah. you. Isn't that nice? So as soon as I saw it, yeah. And you didn't even post a link. Which no, was against I, the rules. You're supposed to post the link so people can vote for you. I don't. So I'm I, not asking for anybody. To there vote was no. For me. You're there was asking for people to vote me. No but shot for me. I'm to, just telling you, I appreciate it because if I if I push to do it and then I lose, I'll be like I didn't fight it hard enough. All you got to do is say to people if they think that you're a good entrepreneur, they should cast a vote for you, and that's the truth. They should go on there and cast votes for whoever they think is the right one. Not for they me. should also vote for Janine Perdomo, and they yes, should they vote should. for Nick Perdomo. Because they, they're, they're, they're deserving. deserving. They're deserving. All right. So uh, let's light this bad boy up. This is a 58 ring gauge. We're from a Lancero to a 58 <laughs> ring gauge. From a Honduran to a Dominican. Well, Dominican. It, it, it is a Dominican cigar, but it's not your typical Dominican. Dominican. It's no, not your grandfather's Dominican? No, it is not. You owe me a quarter. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Blizzard. The Vertigo Blizzard features single action, meaning you pop the button down and the lid opens. Three jets come alive, fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank, and you got an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, all for the low price of $9.99. That's the Vertigo Blizzard. The Blizzard takes the Cyclone to another level. The Cyclone, which is the one that's the biggest selling, one that's out there that you see everywhere, and everybody claims how great it is. It because it is. Because it is. But you take the Blizzard, and now you have one action that you, you know, they just took it to another level. Easy adjustment at the bottom, snap on one button and it lights up, and it has a little chamber on it so it doesn't get as hot as the other. Double wall protection yeah. for sure. Yeah, they improved on some of the, the faults of the Cyclone, but the Cyclone is such a workhorse. It's a workhorse. Everybody says it. I, you know, I, I, uh, I put it through the wash. It keeps working. Well, we have the stupid two guys sweatshirts that have that useless pocket up on the top, so I stuff my lighter in there. I forget every time I do laundry. And there it is. Next thing I know, it's bouncing around the dryer. Lights up every time. All right. So 499 episodes. Here we are at the last hour of 499. When we start the show next week, we have tied the record. Uh, holy mackerel. Um, I remember many, many years ago looking at that when they stopped mm -hmm. and said, well, we're not going to get to 500, but it, it, there's been a line drawn in the sand at that point, and who knows when he wanted to stop, and this is Doc... Doc Stogie Fresh. So, uh, David put, Diaz. Yeah, he, he wanted to end up hitting that milestone for his own person. He put the line in the sea, and that was it. And it's like nobody's ever going to catch it. And here we are, one hour away from tying the record. Uh, so it's been unbelievable. Uh, looking forward to next week's show. We saw this coming, obviously, 10 years ago. We knew where the line had yeah. to be. And as it turns out, this thing is on the calendar. It's yeah. the big deal. I cleared the date, made sure well, that course. I would be it's, here. It, it's the biggest it's thing that ever thing. happened. Yeah. It is. And uh, I get notification from Mr. Jonathan. He will not be here for episode 500. Correct. To all well, because it's not the welcome. important one. 500 is not the important one. 501, when the record is broken, that's the one. 
That's the one you need me for. Yeah, but like you guys have five hundred. When Sosa and Maguire were chasing Maris, everybody was showing up to see him tie the record. Well, yeah, I'm, beating the beating the record is a huge milestone, but tying is the draw. Nah, I don't, I don't buy it. Well, we're gonna do both. Yes. So uh, we'll have Mr. Jonathan here for number five hundred one, where he has to be. You know, I went back this week and I listened to old episodes. And I listened to, I, I went on Podbeam because there's the audio of everything. Yeah. Right? Because we lost a lot of stuff on YouTube and all that. Yes. There you are on an early episode, and there you are as the producer, not talking very much. And then the next week, it becomes Chuck Morrison and nobody else because, um, oh no, Tom Grello was there. And, and then a, a few episodes later, Tom Grello's gone. And it's me and Chuck by ourselves. And that happens a couple of episodes. And there you are as the guest that showed up. And you say, yeah, I, I just came by the show. Because well, I listened to every show. And they yeah. were terrible. They weren't. They were terrible. They weren't. I uh, think some struggled. of the best shows are without Jonathan. I interviewed Nick Perdomo the week after um, Jonathan was gone in the Seabrook store. Uh, and it was a pretty damn good episode because I listened just to see how, how it was. And I'm getting ready for some of the things we'll talk about on episode 500, which is perfect because I can talk behind his back and he won't be able to uh, say that's not true, even though I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Right. But he'll be, he makes the argument of those were terrible shows. Well, mm-hmm. we, you can go back and listen to some terrible shows because we're not batting a thousand either. You know, you know how when somebody shows up at your house, say, on Thanksgiving, and it's obvious they don't have a place to go, and they're just standing there staring at you, and it's awkward, and you're like, would you like, would you like to come in and have dinner with us? And they're like, oh, my God, I thought you'd never ask. That was the look on Dave's face when I was there going, you know what, maybe I'll show up next week. And he had that look like, oh, my God, thank you. So much. Not true. Yeah. And, 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 and he knows me life. better than that. No, and you use it Thanksgiving, a holiday, when you took back the food you brought. Yes, he did. Yes. You, of all people, shouldn't be shitting on my Thanksgiving because I had you at my house for Thanksgiving. I appreciate it. I didn't know many people in New Hampshire, and you invited me over. You should be on but, Team but Mr. He, J right now. But he didn't take anything back with him. He didn't <laughs> leave. No, because the bottle of rum I bought just for him that I think I still have. Is uh, was open. He couldn't drive with it. Ah. Um, so one of the thoughts early on, you, Doc from Stogie Fresh, you asked them to come on the show. We have not heard back from them, so no. they may or may not show up. Uh, it's for, leaning toward not, but um, holding out hope. We'll see what happens. They ended their show in July of 2016. So it's three years removed, uh, three and a half years removed from being there. Maybe he's not into it anymore or whatever. We, we did it. The open invitation is there for you to actually give you the nod of, you know. We the, had him on right when his show ended, and it felt to me like the torch had been passed, so maybe he just feels like whatever. he already passed that, that, the torch. And that's and that's okay. It. I'm just reaching out to be yeah. a nice guy to say it so uh, you're not forgotten, as you shouldn't be. That you you were out there and you did it and you pioneer know. in the podcasting industry. Yeah, and I and I say the same for Cigar Dave. That's out there, the first guy to end up doing it. He's the Godfather as far as I'm concerned, and you know he's still doing it. Not not so much as far as podcasting, podcasting back then, no. but as far as being able to bring cigars to yeah, a radio style program. Yeah, but just like I say to Kurt, rising tides raise all. Of ships. course. So we're doing this, and you are the podcasts that, that are out there. Hopefully, we're an inspiration or something for you to go to the next milestone. It can't last forever, uh, and we'll determine that after episode 501 that we guarantee we're going to do. Um, Tommy Grella, Chuck Morrison. Tommy Grella, me and you were the first ones to do it together. Uh, when you got out, Chuck Morrison jumped in. Um, and When I got out, by the way, it took six weeks for me to leave to train Chuck. You do not leave in one second, but you're going to be amazed when I go over the numbers next week, which you won't be at the show to end up saying it, but how soon you left, what a quitter you are, <laughs> and how, how fast it happened. And right here, you and, you and Tommy were out before the one-year anniversary. Quitters. Quitters. And here it is, almost 10 years into it. But you came back, you totally redeemed yourself, <laughs> and you came back. Um, I don't so, know why you had to yell that, but... Do you want to talk about the old days of the Cigar Authority, episode 500, uh, but Barry and 
um, Ed Sullivan and Ed Sullivan weren't there, and Mr. Jonathan was, so it's going to be Dave talking about it. Do we save that kind of stuff for 501? At least Jonathan's here. Um, do we bring in those old guys? You definitely, for- if, if Tommy's willing to do it and Chuck's willing to do it, you definitely should bring them in. They're another voice. Okay. Another thing we've done in, in milestone episodes. I is- know Rudy would like to catch up with Chuck Morrison here, what Chuck's been up to since yeah. he left. Yeah. Number one asked about person on the show, past or present, for me, to me, has been Chuck Morrison. Okay. All right. So we'll bring Chuck Morrison in. Stats. Uh, I don't know if anybody cares about it but us, but maybe we mentioned some. We're doing fantastic. Thank you to all the listeners that are out there. Um, Absolutely. The, you know, the thousands that, that watch on YouTube and, and Facebook, the, the tens and hundreds of thousands that listen on the podcast catches that are out there, the ones that share, the ones that give us uh, ratings and reviews, and all that stuff happens. Thank you for our live audiences that show up. That is amazing to me every time that people are watching this stuff. Uh, You're burning a hole in the acrylic oh, Jesus. there, Damari. God. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, fantastic. Uh, can't believe we did it. We did it. And um, we're, we're, we're going to go to 501 and we're going to come up with an answer uh, after that. Of I think the stats are an important part. Yeah. I think you, I think you talk about it a little bit. All right. Um, let's talk about what's up in the cigar world right now with Barry Stein. It's time for What's What's Up up? in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse Cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse Cigar today. And this week, the United States Court of Appeals heard oral arguments on the proposed warning labels for cigars and pipe tobacco. The three-judge panel listened to arguments from the cigar industry and the Department of Justice... Did you sit through it? Say what? Did you sit through it? Uh, No, I didn't. No. I heard uh, bits and pieces. Yeah. And uh, in addition to the cigar box warning labels, the Department of Justice argued for a 12-word warning message attached to radio advertisements, Ah. and a ruling is expected in the future. So So are are we radio? Nope. No, technically we're not. We're podcasts. Okay. Can you imagine every time we'd bring up a brand, we'd have to do the warning, or every time we did a commercial, it would be the warning. Or what if we just pay the fine and be the people that well, hold well, out? But if you pay the fine, I'll pay half. Really? Well, I'll pay my share. I mean, Ed Sullivan would have to be in. Barry would have to be in. Yeah, I'm talking a ten thousand dollar fine. Yeah, is it ten thousand? Is that what they're saying? Uh, if, if I remember correctly, it's a five digit fine. Well, no. Anyway, we'll we'll get to we'll get to five hundred one. We'll take him to court problem, right? and we'll file for free speech. We should actually follow that mailbag. Uh, I don't remember if we read it or not. I forwarded to you about making cigars a religion. Mm. Yeah, we read that last yeah. week. And uh, Minnesota and West Virginia have announced that they're expected to renew a Tobacco Twenty One law in the next session. And Ventura, they don't c- give up. You know, they don't give up. So Ventura Cigars, which is part of Cretec International, is in the process of dissolving the company. Having fired ninety percent of the staff, what a shame! Three people remain: Michael Giannini, as well as the rep for Texas and Chicago. Wow! Remain for how long if they're dissolving it? Maybe till they sell out the inventory. I I, I have friends with that company. I feel bad for them, and uh, I, I found that information out yesterday. And I actually met with two of them earlier in the week, and. Um, Jeez. Which means they didn't have any idea. No idea. No idea. No, we actually had plans of future plans going on, and and I, I still have some samples that are in there of very interesting. Of uh, but tis the season, November, December. Yeah, people are going to start dropping off. It's a shame to say, but uh, the writing's on the wall for some of these companies. So we'll see what happens. And Single Cask Nation announced this week that they created a cigar with Aganorsa leaf. The 200 box limited edition, 10 count boxes, by the way, will be sold exclusively via twoguyscigars.com. Also available now at twoguyscigars.com is Davidoff Year of the Rat and the HVC 500th anniversary. All right, so that, that single cask is not available yet. 
Um, we will smoke it on the show next week. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to have them on. It was a, a talk about not, right? Right. That they will not be on. Okay. Uh, so we'll say we'll, we, we'll have them on at a later date. Um, some data end up talking about it also, but we actually can't even sell it. They're going to sell it for one full week to one the... One full day. They'll got to have it exclusively on Tuesday and then Wednesday. Okay. It becomes a public link. One day, that's it. When they wanted a 24-hour advance sale for their membership. Okay. Uh, we've been working on this for a couple of years with them. Uh, this is much like the aging in the barrel uh of the finished product. Yep, they're aged in rye barrels. Not just not the tobacco, but the finished cigar is, is aged in there, and they provided the barrels to it of, of the certain flavor, and uh, we went through this process with lots of samples, lots of sizes, lots of everything, um, and we'll see what ends up happening. I hear that they have a big, big following with their stuff, so we'll see how much they eat it up, because we're only talking a few hundred boxes? Or 200. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll smoke the finished product. I smoked it along the way, but this is the finished product now that we'll smoke uh, next week in celebration of our 500th, along with uh, being able to tell more about it, that we'll have uh, more information next week on that. So is that all the news? That's all. That's what's up in the cigar world. All right. Uh, so next week, um, we'll do episode 500. We'll see who we can bring into it. We'll try to make it a very special show, despite Mr. Jonathan uh, not showing up. I can't believe he did this, but that's the way he is. November 16th will be the episode 500, where Jonathan will be back. Um, will this be the last episode? Will we Episode continue? 501. 501? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 501. Um, and we'll go from the there. The biggest episode ever. It's the most important one. It is. Well, the first one was the most important one. You were there. I was there for the first one, and I'll be there for 501. All right. Perfect. Perfect. First and last. Maybe we'll see. Um, so that's the So, so uh, the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page, and the person who submitted it is in the audience, oh. and his last name is Tobacco. Which means he has to be into cigars. Oh, he's, has he's, to be. He's into cigars. So Matt writes... Can Canada's plain packaging law. Yeah. Hey, guys, I was online the other day, and I see some shops in Canada were posting on social media that they are beginning to receive their first shipments of cigars with plain bands and boxes due to the new law regarding tobacco products there. How does this look for us in the U.S.? Should we be fearful of the same types of laws that will begin to creep into the United States? Yes. Once something passes somewhere, and it could be a city, it could be a state, it could be another country. Something goes through there, and then all of a sudden, other people look at that and say, well, it passed there, so now we get the opportunity to do that. And those are just the, the haters out there that say, let's do the next bad thing to them. So we're always looking. Yeah, it passed in the UK, and it's a movement being pushed by the World Health Organization. Mm. So I remember the, the first uh, time they outlawed smoking in a certain place, and it, it was no... You can smoke here, but you're going to have to actually have a petition, and it's a smoking section and a non-smoking section, and that began the whole thing. The whole idea was to completely wipe it out, which they did. There's not many places to smoke. Yeah, you look at Washington State, you can't even smoke in a cigar shop. You have to be outside yes. the shop. Yes. Crazy. Crazy. Dumb. These things are coming. Okay, that ding-ding means it's time for the matchup of the week, brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair Cigars, who would win this hypothetical battle? Today, it's Robocop versus the Terminator. Robocop <laughs> versus the Terminator. Uh, go ahead, Barry. You go first, because Jonathan has his answer locked in. Terminator was the better movie. He's a cyborg, or whatever he is. It's easily Terminator. Uh, Terminator got beat by a chick and a little kid. It's RoboCop. He lives at the end of every movie. And Terminator died anyway? Terminator got beat by a lady kept and a little kid. Kept coming back. But he lost. But he, he lost. He got a good point. He got melted. And RoboCop, whoever that guy is, I happened to meet him before. He was at an IPCPR trade show. as the guest Weller? speaker. Yes, it is. Um, and he's a cigar smoker. And he wins. Friggin' nailed that. He wins. So is Arnold Schwarzenegger a cigar smoker. Yeah, but he oh, died that's true. in the movie. He died in the movie and Robocop lived on. But Robocop wasn't a person. But they he either was Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Robocop was a person. He just had some cyborg features about him. And he beat that big giant thing. 
Just saying. Went out the window and <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. Do you remember that? No. Really? I don't. I'll buy that for a dollar. On the TV set, in the, in the thing, every time they went by a TV set, there was a um, commercial going on. And the guy would say, I'll buy that for a dollar. And he had pretty girls and things like that. And we'll watch it. And, and I said, where's this going with this thing that shows up over and over and over again? And it goes nowhere. But it's in there. I thought at the end. So you guy, guys are thinking right now that he's crazy. And the problem is. You that watch he's, that. He's deaf in, on one side of his hearing. So I, am, I have gone deaf half. He totally. He, he latches on to stuff. That most of us don't hear that was, because it's that at a was, certain frequency. That was 30 years ago. You were deaf back then. No, I wasn't. You've been deaf the whole deaf time now. I've known you. Okay, here, early thoughts here on La Flor Dominicana 1994. A slightly spicy buttermilk fried chicken. Boom. Wow, that's weird. There's some pepper on. <laughs> that's a very weird taste, but I'll tell you this. <laughs> this I nailed it? No. This is my favorite off. LFD that there is. Take the Connecticut out that was a favorite of mine. Take take every every single one of them out. Because even lighting the LFD, I'm like, God, oh, it's going to be a freaking powerhouse or whatever. And it's not. Not that it's mild. It has a lot of flavor and it's not overpowering to me at all. It's my favorite LFD that LFD makes by far. A guy that likes full-bodied cigars can like it. A guy that likes mild cigars can like it. This is for everybody, the 1994. And it's it's fitting for them. That's the year they came out. Uh, as the brand, it's a fitting you know what else product is, for them. You know what else and, everybody likes? What? Buttermilk fried chicken. Oh, you're way off. The note is molasses. Does anyone here not like buttermilk fried chicken? The note of the not cigar, one person. The note of the cigar is molasses through and through. You know what's great about? All right, I have a flavor. You have to play that drop. I have a flavor note. Oh, and- you son of a bitch! You <laughs> shut it off. <laughs> ah, because you let him out there. I am lodging in charge. Um, uh. <laughs> see, now I lost hermits. Yeah, Her- there's that molasses, which is similar to that of hermits. Raisin hermits. Um, and if you want to compare it to another chewy- cigar on the market, it's very similar to an añejo, and these are available all the time where that's not. An añejo is much stronger than this, but it has that same flavor component. Really. I have to. I, I barely ever smoked that cigar because it's too strong. But I got. I got to do it because it's. It's been probably a few years since I've had that cigar, and I'm. I forgot. I forgot about it. That's the problem when you make something ultra limited. People forget about it. You listening to that? I'm talking to the manufacturers. You totally forget about it because it's just so. It's rare, too limited, rare and yeah. unlimited. So, all right, let's go to break. When we come back. The final segment of episode four hundred ninety-nine. It's all over, but the crying doc. We're about to enter a new milestone. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice it's sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit Drew 
DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more. It's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. This is Mr. Jonathan Carney with La Florida Minicana Cigars, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority. Not Mr. Anything. Good drop, because we're smoking La Florida Dominicana 1994. This is their best. I'll tell you, we're back with the final segment of episode 499. It was a great run, but, well, we'll see in episode 501. I got to say two things, because I won't be here next week. Uh, you yes. has, have matured as a broadcaster. <laughs> Not only are you better and more entertaining and able to follow the script better than you ever have, but you are less picky about the little mistakes that are going to happen on the production well, side. Well, I've given up. Uh, unless it's, the, it's a, it's, it's the a, headphones aren't working and he's like, can't hear anything. I know what the problem yeah, with that's the headphones him. were. I didn't realize I was deaf <laughs> we on dro- my right ear. <laughs> we dropped $600 <laughs> yeah. on new headphones and new cables just, just to find out it was it. his hearing. I said the right hand side just isn't working. <laughs> nope, you bought a broken one. We need another one. Uh, Plug Barry, it in, I got something say, wrong with it. I'm deaf in my right ear. You're holding, you're holding your own on the Don't ones and twos me. today. 
Do not We're far jinx enough me. into the show. There's 20 minutes left. There's if anything still goes three wrong, more segments. Do not jinx you're me. You're fine. You're doing good. Thank you. You're saying that because he doesn't want to end up doing it. He did somebody's show and take take, take one, take mm-hmm. two, then a problem with a guy possibly looking for his money back with video portions of it, and uh, we'll see what ends up happening. I got, I got a feeling it's the guy. Not, I did the best I could. Well, but then uh, Barry's hitting a home run here. Hit a home run. Yeah, I don't get used to it. Yeah. Um, if there's one thing I dislike immensely about my job, it's producing. I, I'm just not comfortable. I feel disconnected from the show. You're completely there. Yeah, I feel like I'm at the kiddie table yeah. on Thanksgiving. There we go. <laughs> but now it's a better area. You're more uh, it's comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. You get space to spread out. It's a little cold by the window, but it's ah. comfortable. You and can we, steal one of uh, Ed Sullivan's Diet Cokes if you want. It's, it's actually a little hot up here under the light, so. I'm freezing. So <laughs> Really? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Um, okay, so, yes, we are going to go to 501. We'll talk about episode, during 501, we'll talk a little about, um, do we continue? Honestly, don't want to listen, let the listeners down is the. the Plus, 10 years is right there. 10 years is there. That's the other thing. That it's right there. April. It's not right there. It's April, but we did 10 years of this. We can go to April. Well, we didn't do 10 years of this, but. I think I missed three shows <laughs> in a row. You missed an episode 500, which is. Yeah, that's uh, true. Okay, it's time to take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. Where the hell is the asylum? See, you uh, jinxy bastard. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum Cigars. (laughs) And this past week, children awaited the rise of the Great Pumpkin as they went trick-or-treating for bags full of candy. That is, unless you lived in an area of inclement weather. Scores of parents pushed cities to change Halloween because it was raining or too cold, and while some caved, not everyone did. When I was younger, my costume came in a box with a cheap plastic mask of Huckleberry Hound and a plastic apron as we roamed the streets, ringing doors in the rain, the snow, or cold weather, hoping we didn't get a rock or a razor blade inside an apple. The Morris Police Department issued a statement that their city will not change Halloween, and it will be a true test of old-school hardiness of the children. They added on the upside, there is no place in Morris they would have to walk uphill both ways with no shoes. Before signing off with hashtag, they don't care about the weather, they want candy. Think that's bad? Here in New Hampshire, parents are now pushing for the day after Halloween to be off from school, pending on the weather, of course. And that's not only insane, it's asylum. It is. So it's um, the wuss- wussification of everybody is, is what continues. Uh, they ended up canceling Halloween around here for tonight. And that was because the weather looked like it was bad. Turns out the weather was fantastic. And yeah, Manchester, it did not start raining until after 8 o'clock. Trick or treat was 6 to 8. I never even remember when I was a kid these conversations even happened. Uh-huh. October 31st was Halloween. It's pouring rain out. It didn't matter. Uh, it was freezing cold out. We put our winter jackets over my Superman costume. Nobody could see the Superman costume, but it, this is how it was. That's what you went with, with Superman? Whatever. I did a lot of Bonavis Collins. Do you even know who that was? I'm sorry. Bonavis I asked. Collins. Do you know who that is? No, I don't know that. Really? One. You do? Because I was Bonavis Collins at one time, and you don't even know who it is. No, who is it? Our older audience will uh, know who it is, and everybody else will have Anybody to Google Anybody who it. knows who that is is dead. No, nah, they're not. Pam knows who it is, and she's young. Uh, I just got a message that says, please share this with Dave. Gentlemen, as panelists for TPE and nominees for the Tobacco Business Award, you both should join forces and do a segment on the Cigar Authority. Your combined years of retail experience would add a great twist to the show and provide listeners and viewers a wealth of knowledge from you both. Hope you can make it happen. What? I don't understand the question. Well, Statement. You're a, you're a panelist for TPE. Yes. And you're a nominee. I, I am not. I am the, I am the um, moderator. All right. Well, I'm the moderator. And some of the two of the people that I will be moderating to 
are in there for the best cigar shops and stuff. And we had the third one here. and uh, It was a I good think, segment. Yeah. He's right. Good. Okay. So that was your mailbag? No. Oh. It was just a bonus. So okay. the mailbag is uh, from our good friend Mr. Hernandez through the Contact Us page of the thecigarauthority.com. Howdy, I've been sitting on this hypothetical question for a while Ooh. and thought you guys might like it. As I'm sure you all know, President Trump does not smoke or drink, but in a hypothetical situation where the Trumpmeister called the Cigar Authority and wanted to be on a live interview to smoke and talk about cigars, what cigar would you have him smoke, not only to have him enjoy, but to also swing the idea that he needs to drop the FDA from the teat of the cigar industry? Teat. Well, it would have to be an Asylum Big Range cigar because it's huge. 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 Um, well, I would, I myself would play to his ego and I would go grab the Trump 45 cigar down there and give that to him. You know, a lot of people went to him over the years before he was the president. I remember this was in, in the nineties, how many people went up to them to make a Trump cigar back in the nineties, early nineties and meetings that took place. And he wanted too big of a piece every single time. And a Trump cigar was, was never done. But a lot of people went to him to actually make a Trump cigar and get into the, his casino and get into his different thing, um, you know, and it would have been something. And he never didn't want to do it because he wasn't a cigar smoker, but he wanted too big of a piece so it never happened. I talked to a lot of people over the years that, that did it. That's what I would say to him. How about making a Trump cigar? But you, in order for that to happen, you would have to squash the FDA and then we could make it happen. And then he could squash the FDA for his purposes so that a Trump cigar could come out, and it would be a win-win. That would be the plan. And it would also be a win for the Democrats who would have him on using the office of the presidency to make money, which would be bad. No, for his, not Trump the person, it would be Trump the hotel cigar. <laughs> Every president makes money while president. Look how much richer they come out of office than oh, they yeah. go in office. If you want to catch some podcasts on that particular subject, we have them here at Studio 21, and they are explosive. Political TNT, uh, Gotta Be Me. With Quake Up America. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, okay, it is time for the Don Raphael Offer of the Day. The Don Raphael Offer of the Day is brought to you by, and we couldn't find anybody else besides Don Raphael Cigars. It was a perfect match. Everybody has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? And today, because it's a couple days after Halloween, it's one thousand dollars per hour to be locked in a coffin for twenty-four hours, and you can't get out for any reason or for any money. Um, you must supply your own diapers if that's what you're going to do. But we're going to bury you alive for twenty-four hours. You got air in there? Yeah. You're not going to die. You need to think about that for a second. Yeah, somehow oxygen is there, so there's a little Can I hang out underground for 24 hours? Now, let's look at the positive side of this. I don't have to listen to anybody bitching. Tell the truth. Would you ever do that? You're talking about $24,000. I'm not claustrophobic in the slightest. Oh, my God. Buried? On, it, it is you know, the you're in a, You're in a coffin, so you don't it, know that you're buried. You're, the lid's closed. Whatever happens I'm on the outside happens. I'm telling you, happens. you are. Before you do it, we're going to put you in a, in a casket. We're going to bury you. For 24 hours, you've got to come out and you get $24,000. Once you start hearing the dirt hit the lid. Oh, my God. You will freak out. I get, I, I, the most fearful thing that there is. They, 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 unfortunately, there's maniacs out there that have done this to people, and they see scratches and things, and you actually die. You got to wonder how many diapers you got to go through. What one, about what? Twenty four hours. One. What about number two? That is number two. What? You're gonna go to a diaper. But the diaper's staying in the coffin. With yeah. You. That might be the deal breaker. Twenty four thousand dollars. The gagging. The vomiting, now you got that, then there's more I vomiting. I could not do five seconds. <laughs> not five seconds. I, I'm actually anxious just talking about it. If there That's was, a, bad if there was like a vacuum hose that could pull the diaper out, I think I could do it. Hold it for 24 hours. Don't eat before you go. Get ready for it so you don't have that problem. $24,000 buried alive in a car. Yeah, you're making a good point. Stuff a very large Ziploc bag in your pocket and... Change yourself. 
You don't, See, I was thinking you, about, you don't eat, you go 24 hours, no problem for you. I was thinking about going naked, but I guess I could stuff a plastic bag. Why would you go somewhere. naked? Make it even Why worse. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're by yourself. It'd be au natural. Would you do it? I think I could do it. Would I do it? Would, I, would you do for it? For 24,000? I probably would. 24 hours? Really? I probably would do it. Can I throw the first shovel on it? You got to oh put my. up half the money. Barry, you couldn't do I'm it. I'm out. I couldn't do it 24 seconds. No way. The, the thought of, oh, I'm they're not, not going to come get you. I'm not claustrophobic at all. Oh, okay. Whatever. If that's how I'm going to go, that's how I'm going to go. All right. All right. This was uh, submitted through the Contact Us page. And Doug writes, hello, gentlemen, and Mrs. J. I don't know why you got to go there. <laughs> uh, I have recently discovered your podcast about three months ago, and during the week, I listen to two or three episodes a day. I know there's been a lot of talk about getting to episode 501 and deciding whether or not to continue with the show. Yeah. Well, I have your answer, okay. and I have a feeling you may like it. Since you do a Cigar of the Year each year, I think it would be kind of cool if you continued the show through the end of next year, then you could do a Cigar of the Decade. That would be epic. Just a thought. I enjoy listening to you guys, and I have no idea why. <laughs> I must be one of the three or four that listen at this point, but on a real note, keep up the good work. And the one thing I've learned is to keep the lid end out of my mouth. Take care, Doug from St. Louis. Doug, thank you. Um, part of my dilemma is, you know, like boxes and athletes and stuff that um, stay too long. They're getting punched in the head Whatever. for a living. You want to leave on a high note. We, by the way, this is a high note. We just uh, looked at the numbers that came in and stuff, and last month was the best month we ever had. After almost 10 years, we continue to grow, 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 which is amazing. But someday it's going to plateau, and somebody better is going to come along, and the, the viewership drops, and somebody else, that's just a, the nature of it. So do you leave on a high note? Or do you keep going, and the show becomes worse, and... Well, you less relevant. Assume to, it's going to be worse. Well, less relevant. Stay to, relevant. We've been doing pretty good so far. Yeah. So that's one of the dilemmas. Um, it's also that it's your day off, Mr. Jonathan. You show up here every Saturday on your day off and do this. You're welcome. Thank you. But <laughs> you don't have to do it. Um, it's uh, and it happens to be in retail the busiest day of the week and. Uh, should I be concentrating on my own business at the time and not continuing this? So anyway, these are things just to think about and stuff. But then the other thing is people enjoy it. And why what about we changing it? the day? Move it to a Wednesday yeah, or something. That's a thought. We, we talked a little about that. That Would the live viewership be much better if we did it at night where people are not busy and whatever they're doing? Even though this is Saturday and people are off mostly on Saturday, but you got things to do and... Other things. So these are all thoughts, and uh, we're talking about it now of what to do, and that's the truth. So uh, we'll get to that. But right now, it's time to get to the Classic Three Way brought to you by Classic Cigars. It's time for this day in classic history brought to you by Classic Cigars. Classic Cigars are now the most affordable cigar brand in America. With prices as low as $1.50, this cigar has something for everyone. The Classic Connecticut is light and smooth, the Classic Maduro is bold but never overpowering. The classic Cameroon sits somewhere in between with hints of sweetness, and the classic Cuban is a real knockoff of the taste and flavors from old-time Havanas. Classic cigars are sold in cost-saving bundles of 20 and sold in five great sizes, ranging from $1.50 to $2.25 per cigar, which makes classic the most affordable premium handmade cigar in America. Classic cigars. I'd like to pull an audible, a last-minute audible at the end. We only have two people. And Pamela Barron is in the audience. Oh. Would you dare come up here and join us? Aren't you awesome? Aren't you awesome? And you deserve to be here. You're here for a lot of shows. Your name's been mentioned a whole bunch of times. So those that watch on Facebook or YouTube get to see Pamela, who's an awesome girl. And uh, she's a real cigar smoker. She don't smoke those girly cigars. She smokes everything. And she buys the uh, great accessories and all kinds of stuff. You there? You setting her all up? 
All right. All right. Say hello. Hello. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Thanks Dave. for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me up here. All right. <laughs> so you, you're in the audience a lot of times, and you so, sometimes when we end up having a good answer or something, it's you in the audience giving us that answer and helping us out. So you've always been a, a help at the Cigar Authority. Um, you know how this works, right? Yes. You've seen it enough. It's usually a lot tougher than it is when you're sitting out there that you're in here. I think Barry is our champion anyway. I think it was Ed Sullivan. Are you sitting in well, Ed Sullivan's seat? Chair. seat so, so there you go. When I kick your ass, so, I will be the champion all right, for I, real. I, I de facto have, champion no, over there. There we go. I have three questions and uh, one tiebreaker. And today is November 7th, Barry. Thriller. The single was released worldwide by Michael Jackson today after Halloween. You would think they would have put this on after Halloween on November 2nd. What year? Thriller. 83. 83, Barry says. What do you got? 1982. 82. And I have 1982 as well. 82. Somebody got two points. Not two people got two points, but one person, Barry Stein, 1983. Two points for Barry because he got it exact. Over to Pamela. Michael Jackson has two things to say about that. Hee <laughs> hee. As you were. Cheerleading. Began in the United States as Johnny Campbell leads the crowd cheering on a football team. Yes, it was a man at the University of Minnesota. The first cheerleader ever. Happened today. What year? I just have a question. Jonathan, is he any relation? Any relation to you. Campbell's to you. soup? To you. Johnny Campbell. D my, my Dancing not, with men. My name's not Johnny. I didn't ask if you were Johnny. I just asked if he was related. Cheerleader. There we go. Girl things. Here we go. Anyway. He's more of a girl than you are, isn't he? Love him. Yeah? yeah so. Okay. What do you got, Pam? 1946. 1946. 1814. 1814. 1922. 1922. 1814, Mr. Jonathan. It's 1898. 1898. So close. You got a point. <laughs> and over to you, Mr. Jonathan. Last question. Pam, you don't have any answers yet. Two for Barry, one for Jonathan. Two will give you a tie, and we'll go to a tiebreaker. One for you, Jonathan. We go to a tiebreaker. Over to you, Jonathan. Born today was Daniel Boone, the most famous for his exploration that made him one of the first folk heroes of the United States. Daniel Boone, born today. What year? I just want to make sure Barrett's has his locked in. I'm locked. 1748. 1748, Barry. 1801. 1801. Pam? 1780. 1780. 1748. 1788. Everybody is over. What? 1734. Everybody is over. Uh, and that is it. We have um, Michael Jackson with two points for Barry. He holds the lead for Ed Sullivan next week. But just for the hell of it, uh, Rudy Giuliani wins the New York mayoral election, becoming the first Republican mayor since 1965. It happened today where Rudy Giuliani becomes the mayor of New York. What year? 1980. 88. 1979. 93. 93. 93 doesn't even Eight. make sense. 1993. It does not. Why doesn't it make sense? Doesn't it have to be increments of two? Four. 1993, according to, uh, I don't know what. Oh, maybe wherever he was I find, elected in 93. Wherever I find these things, wherever I find these things. He was elected in 93. He didn't take office till 94. All right. We uh, uh, have the after show coming up on Wednesday. We're going to record that in just two minutes. Um, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but you'll catch that on Wednesday. Final thoughts here on La Flor Dominicana 1993. Pam, you're smoking it. I love it. I think it's great. It's not too strong. Mm -mm. You like strong stuff anyway. But I do. So somebody like that likes strong cigars, stuff. you like like it anyway. And that's what I thought was going to yeah. happen. Somebody that likes full-bodied cigars is going to like that. Somebody who likes mild cigars is going to like that. I think this is the winner of all the Flor Dominicana. Well, certainly the winner profile, too. Falling dead center as far as the strength, yes. but having a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor. Great cigar. As much as it's a 58 ring gauge, it's a little big for me, I'm still liking it, too. It's a little less than the 60. 
Um, flavors notes or anything, PM? What do you get? I definitely didn't get molasses off of this. Mm-hmm. No? Yeah, doesn't know what she's talking about. What did you think? Closer what, to buttermilk chicken. But. What did you think of the, the tequila? <laughs> you you uh, tried oh, the, the tequila. tequila was gorgeous. Just the nose of it alone was fantastic. The nose. Yeah, you could just smell it all day. Barry, what do you think of the cigar? I'm still getting that, that sweetness, be it Hermes or Hermits. Molasses, Hermits, molasses, maple. There's an underlying sweetness yeah, to the yeah. cigar. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Barry's land of the forest, my taste profile goes. How did you think of the tequila? It was very untequila like. Okay, it, it, I agree. You know, smooth. It didn't have it, that. It, it had some flavor burn, notes in it. That bite. That, yeah. yeah. Because I'm not a fan of tequila, to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of anything, but tequila was like, really? Tequila and Lanceros. That's what, <laughs> what we're doing today here, right? But the tequila and the Lancero were better than expected across the board when it comes to that. So uh, that's it. Next week, episode 500 as we tie on the longest running cigar podcast of all time. Uh, we hope to have them on. Um, as we prepare to beat them and light up a limited edition cigar we talked about from a whiskey company that we teamed up with and we'll tell you how to get them and everything next week. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And you might have learned something today, but if you didn't, always remember to keep the lit end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.